What's going on, Bears fans? Welcome to another episode of Chicago Bears Central, your number one spot for everything Chicago Bears related. On today's episode, we got an injury. Uh, I hesitate to use call it an update on Lucas Patrick. We're also going to talk about how the Chicago Bears have looked at Lamar Jackson plays and adapt that into their own offense for Justin Fields. We're also going to check in on where the Bears currently sit at about a third of the way through the season. We're going to get into all that and more right after this. You are now tuned in to Chicago Bears Central. Your number one place for all Chicago Bears news and content. All right, Bears fans. Uh, so we we did get, like I said, I hesitated to call it an update on Lucas Patrick, but it seems like the, the Bears are taking a wait-and-see approach with Lucas Patrick. There's not a firm update yet if he's going to be able be available for the game against the uh, Dallas Cowboys or not. Um, Lucas Patrick, the fact that it's really been an up-and-down season for him, and, and, you know, honestly, when you when you look at it, right, yeah, he was starting at, at at the guard position. He finally moved over to center. Um, we definitely need him there at center over Sam Mustafer. Um, but at the end of the day, it's like at this point, like you just it, when you just can't stay healthy, when you can't be healthy enough to play the position that that we need you to play, it raises a lot of questions. So you know, it is what it is. Um, at this point, you can't control the injuries. But you know, Matt Eberflus directly said, "Right now, we're still in the wait and see." And then he said this about uh, about Sam Mustafer. Sam is a true pro, a consummate pro. When we made the switch, he just went to work. Because in the business, it's one snap and you're back. One snap and you're starting up for several games, uh, which he did. He's a tough guy, mentally and physically tough. He came in and did a nice job for us. Where the hell was the nice job at, Matt? Where the hell was the nice job at? I would just like to know where was the nice job that Sam Mustafer did for this team. I, I just I don't like I get it right and there is something to be said about the mindset of just doing what your coaching staff ask of you right you expect that from a pro you expect that from a player uh, of Sam Mustafer like you you expect that but he's just not good he's not good it's just like where is the nice job that quote of saying is did a nice job it frustrated me and I know it only frustrated me just because I'm a I'm a Bears fan and he's played like shit but overall it kind of is what it is man um. Yeah, I, I don't know, man. I don't know how to feel about it. It it kind of is what it is there. In my my opinion, I think many of Bears Nation as well just feels like, listen, we're over it when it comes to Sam Mustafer. We've seen it. We've experimented with it. We know where it is. It's not good. Let's move the hell on. But we can't move the hell on if Lucas Patrick is not healthy. But, you know, all that aside, uh, we'll see how this offensive line and, and, and continues to evolve um, and things like that. But Let's talk about where the Chicago Bears currently are and how well, how do we feel about this team right now? Let's take a temperature check, right? The Bears played their most complete game on the offensive and defensive side of the ball against the New England Patriots, and it was a game in which it was needed. Everything that we did in that game was needed. Yes, we ended up winning 33-14, to 14, but at the end of the day, like, Every play, every big play was needed for a momentum uh, switch. Everything that, that, that happened in that game needed to be happening. The fact that we didn't, Justin Fields did not get sacked at all in the second half of that game. Felt pretty good, right? And I want to ask this question. We, we've, we've had a lot of questions about it. We've had a lot of doubts. While this team still is in need of a talent injection for sure, and I think that we're going to get that in the next offseason considering the cap space and, and having more draft picks, things like that. But when it boils down to it, where do we sit with this team? And I'm looking at evaluating this team, right? And we all knew coming into the season, at least more most realistic Bears fans knew that coming into the season, this was going to be a difficult one. This was a season that was all about development, not necessarily the win column, but it was about how you see the players, the team developing game in, game out. And for a few games there, it looked a little stagnant. For a few games there, there were some questions. And in almost every game, there was some bad decisions made either by the coaching staff, by players, Lack of being able to hold on to the ball, Justin Fields at times, not not seemingly going through his progressions um, as quick as we would have liked him to. There's a lot of that, right? But all that was going to be here regardless. But looking at this team, at least for me, and I can only speak for me, you can sound off down below, let me know how you feel about this team. But where I currently sit with this team is that I am, while not in a place of, of happiness with, with the state that the team is right now, I am liking the progression that I'm seeing from this team. This team is, is developing. Justin Fields is developing. We saw one of his best, and maybe maybe a part to unlock Justin Fields a little bit more is using those Lamar Jackson plays. I think that that, like, you know, I saw some negativity about it uh, from, from uh, Mark Grody is the one who uh, tweeted this um, and just said that the Bears uh, were apparently looking closely at Lamar Jackson's offense. When Justin Fields was asked about 
All design runs. It just brings another whole element to our offense, stealing some plays from the Baltimore Raven, Ravens. This you got to do. This is a league in which it's a copycat league, not as copycat as the NBA, because the NBA is definitely a copycat league. But it really depends on the talent you have on your roster. And if they're looking at Lamar Jackson and some of the plays that that the, the Baltimore Ravens use to unlock him and put him in better positions, and they're now adapting that in their own way for Justin Fields, shows the growth and development that not only this team is doing, but the coaching staff is, is doing. Shout out to Luke Getze for, for being open to do that. You could run into some coaches that are just stubborn on their system. They don't look at what other teams are doing. They want to have players just fit into their, into their system and their ideals and things like that. For Luke Getze to be able to look at what another team's doing for another mobile quarterback, and then say, hey, how can we now introduce elements of this or damn, still direct plays of, from this and use this to help our quarterback along his development? This is, th those are great things for me. When, uh, for me. And, and looking at the teams, for example, outside of just the offensive end of the ball, because Justin Fields' development is the keys thing, right? That's the biggest thing that we were looking for in this season is how is Justin Fields' development? How does he progress along as a quarterback of the future for the Chicago Bears? That, of course, was the biggest question coming into this offseason, but you got to look at the other things. Jaquan Brisker is legit, right? And he's and he's building more confidence, getting his first interception in 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 the game Monday night. Huge for him, right? Kyler Gordon, while going through some definitely rough bumps, is putting together better games now. It started with him putting together better stretches. Then he had a solid second half. Then he had a solid game overall. And it's going to be some I wouldn't necessarily call it regression. There's still going to be some days where we look at it and say, hey, this Kyler Gordon kid's getting cooked. But at the end of the day, like, he's showing development. The fact that this defense as well, benching Robert Quinn, bringing in the young guys and Travis Gibsons, Dominique Robinson, letting them go through the development that they need. Like I said on yesterday's episode, it's time to sit the old guys that aren't really giving you much, and it's time to start building in this confidence of these young players and really taking a look at them. Because listen, Everything's going to be reevaluated this, this offseason for the Chicago Bears. Everything's going to be reevaluated. And you really want to have a look. You really want to see how Dominique Robinson and Travis Gibson project to be your possible starters because, listen, that's less money that you have to spend if you have these two homegrown talent that are developing and that you can say, hey, we are going to roll the dice with them being our starters at day one heading into next season. Yes, we're only – seven games into the season. We don't want to look too far ahead into just what things can do next season, but you're looking at how you continue to build them up in the season that you have left. In this 10 games that we have left in this season, you want to continue to build in that confidence of these younger players because if you can get these guys to hit, not only does it save some of the cap space you may have spent next season on trying to bring in more veteran players at that position, but it just... It, it helps the team overall when you're developing. And it shows, again, Ryan Poles has, a, has an eye for talent. And so when looking, looking at this team and where we sit right now, while it's been tough, it's been hard, it's sucked, it's been frustrating, it's been a lot of things and negative emotions attached with this team and the way that they've played in some games. But the Bears are improving. The Bears are improving. And I've said it, and I came into the season saying, hey, it may be till week six or seven until we really see what this team looks like. Now, we're past that, and it's going to be longer than that. But the team is making steps in the right direction in the running game. Let's be clear here. We have the best running game in the NFL. And when you have that, right, and, you know, for all the talk about, you know, are they going to trade Monty? There's been some rumors there. Are they going to be able to re-sign Monty? Everything like that. When you look at the asset that we have, depending on what Monty wants for sure, if they're able to keep this running core, and I'm going to throw Justin Fields in there as well. You keep Justin Fields, you keep David Montgomery, you keep Khalil Herbert with an improved offensive line, hopefully next season. And Justin Fields developing even more. That's a dangerous outlook for this team. And I, like I said, I don't want to make it all about the, the offensive end. I talked about Jaquan Brisker, talk about Kyler Gordon, talk about Dominique Robinson. There are a lot of, of young pieces that you can look at on this team. Even on the offensive line with, with Braxton Jones, Larry Bourne, like there's a lot of young talent on this team that I'm looking at now, and most of it I do view favorably, right? The young talent on this team, for the most part, I view very favor favorably, and I do see them having success, and I do see them going through those growing pains, and I do see them working their ass off. So while we sit here as a Chicago Bears team and our team sitting at three and four, right? 
There were some people that projected the Bears would not win three games this season, right? And outside of the win and loss column, which I know the win and loss column, we want to see this team put up wins. It's natural to want to see your team win. It is what it is. But the direction that the Chicago Bears are going in, I have to sometimes step back myself, separate myself as a fan from watching the games, being emotionally invested in the interceptions, whatever else, and say, I'm overall happy with the direction that this team is headed in. There's still a lot of question marks. Don't, don't be, don't, let's not get that twisted. Still tons of question marks. But the overall direction, the coaching staff, Luke Getze's offensive play calling being much better the last few weeks. Matt Eberflus and the system and the, the culture he's building here in Chicago. I'm overall happy with it. And I wonder if you guys feel the same way when it comes to this team. Let me know all that down below. Now, before we go today, I do want to go over the power rankings. And after the Bears' big win against the New England Patriots, where do we sit right now? So as far as Yahoo Sports, we went up from number 28th in their power rankings to number 22nd. Again, that is a that is prime time games will do that for you. You'll see we've risen quite a bit in each of these. In uh, NFL.com's power rankings, we went from 29th to 23rd. That's a six six spot increase as well. They quoted Justin Fields taking a huge step in his development on Monday Night Football, and uh, the fact that Justin Fields went into hostile ter territory and did not blink, delivering with his arms and legs in a blowout win over Bill Belichick. And, and the Patriots, the Bears' offense was relentless, rolling up 243 yards on the ground with 11 third-down conversions, their most in a game since 2015. Again, pointing towards that good direction that, that this team's going in. Bleacher Report, we went from number 30th in their power ranking to number 24th. CBS Sports, from number 30th to number 25th. ESPN from number 29th to number 28th. ESPN's always going to hate on, on Chicago teams. That's just something that we noticed. But it's, it's, it's telling you that not only are we noticing as fans, but these other outlets are noticing that the Chicago Bears are, are developing. The Chicago Bears aren't that team that you necessarily expected for some people to go worse than the 0-16 uh, Detroit Lions. Shout out to uh, Mike Martz on that one. But this team is stepping up big time. Stepping up big time. Allowing zero points in the second half against the New, New, New England Patriots. Right? One interception each from Kyle Gordon and Jaquan Brisker. This team is doing the things that need to be done. It is just happening. But I want to know from you guys down below. Let me know. Sound off, because you guys haven't been calling in on the mailbag episodes. But call sound off down below. Let me know how you really feel about the direction that this Chicago Bears team is headed in. Some questions, some concerns, some positives. Sound off all, all, all on it down below to let me let us know how you feel. But that's it for me for today. Make sure you're following the show at Shy Bear Central. You can send us any feedback, questions, comments, concerns, chicagobearcentral at gmail.com. Lastly, if you want to leave a text and our voicemail, the number to do so, 773-242-9336. We are the number one spot for everything Chicago Bears related because of you guys. And like I like to end every episode on, bear down. Love you guys. Peace, y'all. This has been a presentation of The Break, Break, Break Media. Media.